What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash Yamada Bird Ho. And if you love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that subscribe, maybe that like too, and let's crack on with today's stories. Now, our first story is coming from Latewater9669, titled, Am I the arsehole for losing weight before my sister's wedding? I, 28 female, used to be quite overweight. Over the last year or so, I've made changes in my life and have successfully lost almost 100 pounds. I don't live close to any of my family and don't post on social media, so my family wasn't really aware of my weight loss. I did mention that I was making healthier choices, but that's it. It's just that every time before that I've tried to lose weight, it hasn't worked out, so I didn't want anyone commenting on it. My sister, 26 female, got engaged last year, and I'm super happy for her. Due to circumstances, the wedding had to be pushed back a little. It's happening a week from now, and because I haven't seen everyone in so long, I decided to come down two weeks earlier to help out and catch up. Well, when I came to see my family, my sister freaked out upon seeing me. As it turns out, she has gained a bit of weight. Not super noticeable to me, she still looks great, but I think that this is the first time in our lives that I'm smaller than her. I've always been the fat sister. She basically accused me of trying to upstage her and my parents are fully taking her side. I'm really not sure if I'm in the wrong here as so many of my family are taking her side of things. Am I the asshole for losing weight before my sister's wedding? Now, it's one of those stories that I come into it and I think, how could you possibly think you're the arsehole in this situation? Then you went on to say in the end, you know, so many of your family are are saying that you are. So I can understand from that point of view, the pressure that's being put on you and the way that you may be feeling right now and questioning yourself if you're the arsehole over this. But let me assure you, you are absolutely not the arsehole in any way, shape or form. Looking after your health like this, taking steps to positively better yourself. Do not let people shit on that, please. And I do wonder if there's gonna be additional information down in the comments, if there's more to this from between the two sisters. It sounded like from what OP was saying, you know, that she still thinks she looks great and there was no negativity between the two of them. So apart from jealousy, why would the sister lash out this way? I'm not making excuses, I'm just asking questions here. But let's check out the comments to see what they say with maybe a walrus who says, wow, OP, you spent your whole year of your life losing weight and make sacrifices just to upstage your sister. How dedicated and petty of you, slash sarcasm. How delusional is your family? Not the arsehole. Nonasa says, not the arsehole, you didn't lose weight at her. Glossy says, not the arsehole, girl, don't go to the wedding if this is how they're going to act. Like, cut toxic family out. Purple Penguin Poop says, wow, how dare you lose an amazing 100 pounds and decide to make healthier life choices? How dare you care for your health and make your insecure sister even more insecure due to her own problems with vanity? What a monster. Slash sarcasm. Or ridiculousness aside not the asshole. With all due respect, your sister needs to get her head out of her back end before she starts choking on the shit that she's so full of. I'm sorry you have to go through this, OP. Unit Healthy says, not the asshole. I suggest you simply say, I'm sorry my current appearance has ruined your wedding. I'll head back home now, send photos, then get on with your life. Sometimes I've seen it happen. Families get so entrenched in obesity and unhealthy habits that they are actually offended by friends or family members who choose a different path truth is they're jealous as can be but may not even realize that themselves and we're finished with punk parotta who says no one's an arsehole here let me explain i say this as someone who was your sister my older sister who had been on the chubby side all of her life decided to lose weight for my wedding with the privilege of hindsight she made a great choice and looks fantastic in the wedding pictures unfortunately i turned into a bridezilla one fine day when we were wedding shopping and i had a hard time getting stuff that fit while she had no problems getting the dress that looked fabulous on her new sleek bod mind you she had given birth about six months earlier i straight up started sobbing in the store i'm ashamed to admit that i even accused her of stealing the limelight what i didn't have was family that supported me in my silly tantrum they immediately told me my sister worked hard for this and i need to get over myself That's all the wake up call I needed. I got myself together, took a day, apologized to my sister and appreciated the fact that she was so excited about my wedding. 
that she finally fought off her obesity. It honestly made my weighing so much better than if I had spent the entire day seething at her. I completely get where your sister is coming from, but this needs to be shut down pronto. Your family, on the other hand, are completely the assholes here. Them joining in on this bridezilla campaign is detrimental to both you and your sister. Edit 100 pounds, holy heck. Great job, OP. Super proud of you. Don't take any of this drama to heart. And just to go over it, it's 7.1 stone or just over 45 kilos. Wow. Now, what do you guys make of this story? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next one. And our next story comes from Strawberry Fixer 8911 Am I the asshole for giving my sister-in-law baby formula? I'm going to start my post by saying that I don't have kids and I have no experience with babies or motherhood or children. And beyond being around them in a group settings where at least one of the parents and a ton of other people are around and that's it. Just for some context to my post. My brother's wife had a baby 17 days ago. I didn't go visit them yet, but my brother and sister-in-law sent me some pictures. My brother said our cousin Rachel was around a lot because my sister-in-law is having trouble breastfeeding and Rachel is a big believer in it and is helping her. I offered to help them if I needed it and on Saturday they asked me to go to the grocery store for them because no home delivery had an open spot. When I dropped the food off, I was shocked at how bad my sister-in-law looked. She literally looked like the walking dead, barely awake and not showered and she was actually crying because she was so frustrated. It actually scared me how bad she looked. At first, I didn't want to butt in, but it bothered me so much, I went back to the store and got a can of baby formula. I figured it would give her a break and my niece could eat. It was even worse when I gave it to my sister-in-law because I said it was no big deal if my niece got formula. It wasn't a problem. My sister-in-law broke down and I was honestly scared because she was weeping. Like in the movies, when someone dies kind of weeping. No one told her it was okay not to breastfeed. She felt so guilty because of Rachel butting in and no one telling her formula was okay. I actually ripped my brother a new one because he sat back while my sister-in-law suffered. There was no way he didn't see how bad she looked. No offense, but she looked terrible. I got my sister-in-law to shower after my niece ate and fell asleep and I changed the sheets on the bed and told my sister-in-law to sleep while my niece slept and I said I would get more baby formula. I thought I did the right thing because my sister-in-law actually stopped crying, showered and slept the next three days and she looked better and didn't cry again. My niece gets full. My idiot brother smartened up and told Rachel to stay away and everyone else, especially our parents and sister-in-law's parents to butt out. They take turns feeding so they can both sleep. My parents and Rachel are furious at me. Sister-in-law's sister was in agreement with Rachel and left me an angry voicemail full of swearing. Rachel basically had sister-in-law holding the baby while topless 24 seven. And my dumbass brother sat there and didn't help with the baby at all. Rachel breastfed all her kids until they could walk and talk and never had problems, but my sister-in-law obviously did. My dad said I overstepped and should not have butted in. Normally I'm big on mind your own business, but this time I was scared shitless after seeing sister-in-law on Saturday. Since I'm not a mother or baby expert, I have no idea what it is like with a newborn. I'm second guessing now after I feel like I did the right thing because everyone is angry with me and say I should mind my own business. And we're gonna start with LJ222 on this one who says not the asshole, you probably saved the baby's life. Husband should have taken her to the hospital and they would have probably done the same thing, given the baby formula. Some people are so smug about thinking they are right, they ignore the facts under their noses. Edit, not only are you not the asshole, you are smart, kind, and a loving person. Shiny Bobble says not the asshole. The breast is best crowd seem all too willing to allow suffering because the but the reality is fed is best, and you did a good thing for your sister-in-law and the baby. Librarian says, not the asshole. I teach developmental psychology and one of the biggest conversations I have with my students each semester is that a fed baby with sane parents is the goal. Breastfeeding is often sold as the best slash only responsible option, but that just isn't true. While breast milk is associated with better short-term outcomes, by the time kids are in school, there is no significant difference between breastfed and formula kids. You did the right thing by helping your sister-in-law in that state. She couldn't be the best possible parent for her kid. Sometimes we need to be given permission to do things in a way that works for us rather than the way society tells us. You gave her that permission. Amy LM says not the asshole. You have done an amazing thing. 
bewildering how an 18 year old with no experience raising babies has more common sense than multiple adults with multiple children. I really hope your brother and sister-in-law choose to ignore the input and pressures of others and continue to do what is best for their family. And one more from Fear who says, honestly, I think you were a great sister-in-law. How supportive you were. Not everyone can breastfeed and your sister-in-law was being made to feel like a failure. The goal at the end of the day is for the baby to get nutrition. The baby now has a full tummy and mum had a shower and a nap. Good job, little sister-in-law. Not the arsehole, not even a tiny bit. Now, what do you guys make of our second story? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next one. And our next story comes from Halloween Throwaway 9 titled, Am I the Arsehole for Making My Son Pass Out the Candy He Got From Trick or Treating Because He Was Being Rude? My son is nine years old. We went trick or treating like we usually do and the night was going well, except when we got to a house that had a bowl of candy sitting on the porch, it said, take two please. He puts his whole hand in there and grabs about six pieces. Of course, I corrected him and made him put four of them back, explaining he needed to leave some for others. From then on, he had an attitude and the last straw was when I told him to stop grabbing so much candy from people and he screamed no. We had only been out for an hour, so I took him right on home, took his candy bag, dumped it in the bowl and told him to come sit outside on the porch with me. He objected, of course, as kids came by and took handfuls of his candy. He complained that they were taking too much and I told him that he shouldn't have done the same then. His father came home from work, asked why he was in his room crying, to which I explained why. He said it was really cruel to give away the kid's candy just because he was taking a little too much. I said he needs to learn to not be so greedy, to which my husband said that it's okay, it's Halloween. He said I was being a jerk and I should have cut him some slack for the one holiday that kids get to pig out. I don't agree, although I figured I could have done this differently. Am I the arsehole? Edit, no, I did not give away the entire bowl and even if I had, I would have had no problem providing him more once he learned his lesson and apologized. We're going to start with who the who says on this one, not the arsehole, the outbursts are what get me. When he screamed no, more specifically, it sounds to me like a test of boundaries, as if he knew perfectly well what was expected of him and purposely crossed the line in order to see if his behavior would be corrected. And you did that. He learned a lesson when he became resentful that other kids were taking too much. That's what his behavior looks like, but from the view of others. Gressy and Violet says not the arsehole, although I do hope you did save some candy for your son. He's past the age where he should know how his greed affects others and seeing it in action was probably a lesson he'll remember. Temper that lesson with a few treats later and a discussion and I think it's a good parenting moment overall. Healthy Oatbit says, not the arsehole, your hub got this one wrong. It's not about grabbing too much candy. It's about you telling your son not to do something and him screaming no. At nine years old, that is not okay. Spellscribe replies to that one saying, it's not okay, but I feel like it's pretty normal. I know for my kids, seven to nine is when they really start pushing boundaries. How you respond sets up the future dichotomy. If Opie's husband had his way, this kid would be a real risk of turning into an entitled brat. As long as Opie is reaching out of compassion for the son's future self and not being outright nasty slash rubbing it in, I think they've done a stellar job with this. Extensions Teapot says, some of these comments are very strange, cruel, cut contact over candy. This was an entirely proportionate consequence for poor behavior. Missing out on candy on one occasion is not a significant punishment. It is related to the poor behavior and completed immediately, i.e. no ongoing punishment. This is entirely within the parameters suggested by child behaviorists. Too many children don't have parents or guardians who care about them enough to set reasonable boundaries with proportionate consequences like this. Definitely not the arsehole. And Packer Backer says, you're the arsehole. I was completely on board with you, making your son put back the extra candy and ending trick-or-treating early. However, I think making him give away all of his candy to other kids is crossing the line. A lot of people on here are forgetting that, that this child is nine years old. Yes, he's not a toddler, but he's still a very, very young age. And sometimes they are being unreasonable. That's cause he's a kid. I would have taken away his candy and made him earn it back with good behavior. I think the lesson you were trying to teach your son is a valid one, but the execution towards the end was bad. And one more who fjorts replies to that one saying, scrolled a long way to find someone saying this. The kid needed telling, but parents also need to understand that you don't need to be punitive with children. 
punishment only need to go so far as to correct the behavior. And if they go too far, you risk being counterproductive. He got greedy and rude, so you stop the behavior in its tracks and go home. Don't give him the candy until he's calmed down, apologize, and understands the situation. Making him spend time giving it all away doesn't serve any purpose, and it's a huge deal to a kid. It's not like he can go out and get more candy now. He's learned his lesson. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Did the punishment fit the poor behavior? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from drybody7578 titled, Am I the arsehole for not wanting to get my girlfriend an expensive engagement ring? I've 26 male, been with my girlfriend 26 female for four years and we've recently been talking more and more about marriage. Although my girlfriend grew up relatively well off, for the time I've known her, she's been pretty low maintenance. She's never cared about designer brands, rarely buys new clothes, and the jewelry she owns was gifted to her. I have a decent job now, 80k a year, and I've been saving for a while, but growing up, my family didn't have a lot of money. My girlfriend and I have always seemed to be on the same page when it comes to saving money. I assumed she'd be fine with a more affordable ring, when I started looking into rings, I discovered moissanite rings, which look similar to diamond rings but are much more affordable. I was looking at rings in the 1500 to 1800 range. When I mentioned this to her, she insisted she wanted a real diamond ring and sent me links to a bunch of diamond rings that she liked. The prices range from 6,500 to 10,000. I told her that I wasn't willing to spend that much. She seemed genuinely mad and it wasn't that expensive. We got into a pretty big argument over it. I told her that it was ridiculous to ask me to spend that much and I thought she was more reasonable than that. She said I was being cheap and that I could afford it and that I was basically saying she wasn't worth it. I told her no one is worth a 10,000 ring. <laughs> Eventually, my girlfriend said she didn't care and that I should get whatever ring I want but she's clearly still mad and I know this is going to be an, an ongoing argument. I'm a bit frustrated because this seems out of left field. I've always known marriage is super important to her, but I didn't realize she'd insist on a diamond ring. So I talked to my older sister about it, who despite agreeing diamond rings were stupidly priced, sided with my girlfriend and said if I could afford it, she didn't see the big deal. She added that my girlfriend has done so much for me and I was being an asshole about this. What my sister means by my girlfriend doing so much for me is that she was really supportive when I was in a serious car accident four years ago. I broke multiple bones and required a few surgeries. Although where I live, most healthcare is covered, I wasn't able to work for a while and had expenses I wasn't able to pay. I had been dating my girlfriend for only six months at the time and she was really there for me. I couldn't pay my rent, so she let me move in with her for free and help pay for a few expenses and for physical therapy I needed. She also helped me get a job with her uncle, who was the VP of an insurance company. It was an entry-level position and had a business degree, so it's not like I was unqualified. Obviously, I thank her for all she did for me, but it's not something we talk about much. I don't think I'm obligated to buy an expensive ring because she helped me out a few days ago. But if my own sister said this, I'm guessing my girlfriend must feel this way as well. Am I the asshole here? Edit, this post got way more attention than I expected. I've definitely reconsidered my stance. I'm going to talk about this more with her. Thanks for all your help. Now, as I started reading this one, I was kind of like an, on not the arsehole fence about it, mainly because it is a lot of money to spend on the ring. But as the story went on, my opinion started to change a bit for a few reasons, really. But you know, this is something she will be wearing for the rest of her life, potentially. You said the money really isn't that much of a big deal from what I'm getting. And then with those in mind, you went on about how your girlfriend did so much for you. And I kind of put myself in OP shoes at this point. And I was thinking, well, how would I feel if someone done this amount for me, got me my job to where I am today and helped me when I really needed it the most. And assuming this ring does mean that much to her, she will be wearing it forever and money isn't that much of an issue in the end but when it comes to it i mean if if you was totally hard up it'd be completely different to me but i'm gonna go for one that's probably gonna make me the arsehole in this situation i'm gonna say you're the arsehole in this and it was purely based on the feels i got towards the end of that post it my, my opinion changed halfway through 
But Keiju says, gently you're the asshole. I completely get not wanting to spend your money like that or put any coin into the pocket of the De Beers monopoly. But by saying no one is worth 10,000, you have inadvertently assigned monetary value to the woman you want to spend the rest of your life with. You both should sit down and look at alternatives together. Don't frame it as her not being worth it. Try to educate her on, on the unethical nature of the diamond trade and see if she wants an alternative stone. Meat King of Chicago replies to that one saying, Opie doesn't give a shit about blood diamonds. He cares that it costs a lot. Him educating her about it is just him using a different cudgel to get her to agree with him. And I'm not saying he's wrong. 10K is a huge amount, but the girlfriend is smart. She's not going to be fooled by a sudden serious concern at how unethical diamonds are. JK Ram says, you're the asshole. She's typically low maintenance and agreeable. She supported you and stepped up when you needed her without complaint. She had asked for this one thing you find unreasonable, but can afford. It's something she is going to wear every day for the rest of her life. Talk with her about it. Ask her to explain why it's so important to her without interrupting or arguing. That part is important. When it's your turn, tell her why you think it's too much. Focus on how you could use that money together not just on it being wasteful. Why you find it wasteful, even though you can afford it, is what matters. No one is worth $10,000 sounds a lot like I don't love you that much in the heat of the moment. Once you have a real, understandable, calm reasons, try to find a compromise if you still disagree. A diamond is important to her, so you can give her a budget you feel is reasonable. Can you nudge that budget into an area that feels slightly uncomfortable to you? Neither of you may love the feeling of compromise, but that's what a healthy marriage takes. She's already shown you the richer slash poorer sickness and health part. Now show her you can work with her to find solutions when you disagree. Marvel Serpent says, in my opinion, if your girlfriend is relatively cheap about other things and this one thing is really special to her, I think you should get the diamond. This seems important to her. You'll earn the money back eventually. It's a one-time purchase for something that is really important to her. If you truly care about her desires, I would buy the ring. Loving wife over money. And one more from Spinnable who says you're the asshole because one, you literally told her she wasn't worth $10,000, which is a really shitty thing to say to someone you want to spend your life with regardless of context. Two, you're very dismissive of her wants. You said she's fairly low maintenance and this is the first time she's asked for something like this. It's her engagement ring, arguably the most important piece of jewelry that she will ever wear for the rest of her life. Why not get her what she wants if you can afford it? Three, you have to understand that, that from her perspective, you are telling her, I know you want this diamond, but I don't think you're worth the money and I want to give you a cheaper alternative to what you want, even though I can afford to give you the one thing that you asked for especially since you came at an angle that a moissanite is cheaper, similar gem. I'm sure it would be different if you had brought it up like, you really like other gemstones, so I think we should get you a ring with that gemstone instead of diamonds because it's more sentimental. Or, I know you think diamonds are pretty, but I know you also care about ethical sourcing and sustainability. Why don't we look at some alternatives? Instead, you came from a purely financial standpoint, which very easily comes off as, you're not worth this much money. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and your thoughts on all of today's stories. If you choose to share them, I would love to hear them. And I will see you, you cheeky so-and-so, <laughs> in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.